Hello everyone, in honor of Evil Dead Rise arriving on Max, I decided to go over my favorite Evil Dead films, or should I say my favorite entries from the franchise. One thing I love about this franchise on the Evil Dead is that each film has its own flavor. You know, I love all these films and it's because they range from different genres and characters and settings. You know, one film could be dark, like the Evil Dead, or the 2013 remake, or Evil Dead Rise. But they can have more comedic moments like with Army of Darkness or Ash vs. Evil Dead. And then you can have a blend of both, like Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. So that's just one thing that makes this franchise, I guess, consistent within the horror genre. Anyway, before I continue, this list is going to greatly differ from yours. Again, this is just my personal preference of least to most favorite entries of the Evil Dead franchise. Feel free to comment down below. Starting at number six for me is Evil Dead Rise. Now, Evil Dead Rise is directed by Lee Cronin, and this film was originally meant for HBO Max before it had a theatrical release. I could kind of tell that. This film has a lot going for it. I love the darker tone, the opening. It's a very stylistic opening. Probably one of my favorite openings of uh, a horror film in the past couple of years. And then we end up moving to Los Angeles with an apartment. We have two sisters with Ellie and Beth. Ellie is just like living with her kids. She has a teenage daughter, a teenage boy, and a baby girl, like a six-year-old, seven-year-old little girl. Beth is her sister who's like a groupie, kind of like music technician. She ends up getting knocked up. She basically goes to her sister's place for support. Strange occurrences happen. We have an earthquake that basically collapses the parking garage of the apartment building. And you see this old vault there that used to belong to a church. And that's where the teenage boy, who's stupid enough, goes down there and gets the Book of the Dead and the recordings you know, the chance. Some cool Bruce Campbell audio cameos in this film, although no Ash Williams, and that's kind of disappointing. But other than that, I really like the style of this film and how dark it is. It's gory, but because it's gory, I wouldn't say it's scary. Something about this film for me lacks the edge of the previous films. I don't know what it is. I love what they do with the rise building and like the floors, the stairs, collapsing, the elevator not working, them trapped on one floor, dealing with different people, the deadites, all that stuff is great. I just think they could have done more. It's an intimate, simple setting. Something about it feels like it's lacking what even the first film back in the early 80s had. I can't explain it. I just can't put my finger on it why I did not enjoy this as much as the other entries. That being said though, they do some gnarly stuff. Kids are not off limits. It does have that evil dead terror and gore. And there's moments in this where, like, the mother's possessed, and I just love the shit she says. It's like, Mommy's sleeping with the maggots now, and stuff like that that's just really gnarly. And I also like seeing their neighbors start turning on them. It's just that I think they could have done more in a rise building. But there are references to other films like The Shining and the previous Evil Dead entries. And because of that, it does have a strong finish. Not quite as strong as 2013, in my personal opinion, but overall... It's still an enjoyable film, but for me, I was left a tad disappointed. Of It felt like it should have been more. It just wasn't up to the previous four films, in my opinion. After that, at number five is Army of Darkness. This is actually the first film of the Evil Dead franchise I saw, not knowing it was Evil Dead. I mean, you could watch it going in blind. They explain everything. Ash Williams is sent back in medieval times. Sam Raimi definitely adds a bit more kind of B-movie comedy in this one. If you thought Evil Dead 2 was funny, this one takes it a step further. I love the villains. I love how this they talk about the fantasy elements and how they bring the history of the Necronomicon, how Ash deals with like evil Ash and like the little clones and stuff. Princess, uh, Hell to the King Baby. I love the flashbacks and how like you get his like 20th century mentality put with medieval times. It's a shame they did not let Sam Raimi call this the medieval dead. It's just a fun film, you know, that goes back to like early versions of Jason and the Argonauts and stuff like that. Like I had a blast watching this movie. Even if you're not a fan of horror films, this is the one entry where I think you can have general audiences go in and enjoy the movie for what it is. And Bruce Campbell delivers as Ash Williams as always. I mean, he's just fantastic in this. Sam Raimi's direction. He definitely has that level of camp and comedy and horror. He has a certain style that's very distinct. And I love the ending. You know, you have the supermarket ending and then um, you also have the alternate ending where Ash wakes up too late and he's in a dystopian apocalyptic future. Both endings are great, but uh, overall, this is just a fun film and just one of my favorites of the franchise. After that, number four for me is Ash vs. Evil Dead. This is one show that is a blast to watch. Yes, it's a bit more comedic, but they get more kind of into the action horror element. Dinah De Lorenzo as Kelly and Ray Santiago as Pablo are great. 
who could forget Lucy Lawless, Xena Warrior Princess as Ruby, and then of course Bruce Campbell returns. Somebody, or should I say he was high one time with some woman and he read the Necronomicon and he released The Evil Dead. First season is a blast, a perfect beginning, middle and end. Season two still has more of the Evil Dead humor, but some of it was a bit gratuitous and I know people are a fan of it. I'm in the rare minority where I really dug season three and how kind of dark it got, like kind of like apocalyptic and like Soul Reaver, like the video games, or like the underworld and stuff, having Ash Williams be a father. They added so much stuff there. Oh, let's not forget Lee Majors as Ash Williams' father. You get some nice nods to Ted Raimi and some of the other actors from the original Evil Dead films. Overall, this is just an awesome, awesome show from start to finish with an apocalyptic Mad Max-esque ending. And who could forget Deep Purple with Space Trucking and Stormbringer. After that, at number three for me is Evil Dead from 2013. Fede Alvarez's film is just a really sick, demented, brutal film. And I think what this film has, besides the stylistic choices and the execution over the previous films for me, is it goes back to its darker roots like the original Evil Dead, but then Jane Levy makes it as Mia. She is the final girl in this, she is the main character. I love this character and I just found, even though some of the characters were annoying, I found them more compelling than in Evil Dead Rise. And the only reason why I have it over Army of Darkness is because it does resemble more of that original Evil Dead film. Some moments recreated, but it's just a very bleak looking film. Both the theatrical and extended director's cut, I think, are great. All the way to like the people in the cabin distrusting each other, seeing them turn, and, and, and then ultimately Mia being just like Ash Williams, a female version of Ash, and having to face off against the entity in the cabin itself, and that whole blood-soaked third act is just... A bloody good time, no pun intended. I really liked what this was going for. If you're a fan of the original film or stuff like Silent Hill, this will definitely be for you. It's a very bleak, bleak film, but I love Fede Alvarez as a director, you know. His later films showed more of his work. His work on From Dust Till Dawn, the series, I've always been a fan of him. And yeah, he really not only paid respect to the original, but did something... He, he took the, the cabin in the woods tail and kind of spun it into a new direction. It felt fresh. After that, number two is The Evil Dead. The Evil Dead, for its budget and Sam Raimi and friends going out and shooting, this is an iconic film that shows you how talented Sam Raimi was, even at a young age, way before Spider-Man, Darkman. This film set up the Cabin in the Woods trope for horror. Resident Evil 7 probably would not even exist without The Evil Dead. And I just love what this film does. Ash Williams is a completely different character. He's like Sarah Connor in Terminator 1. Everybody, it's just, it's just teenagers having a good time. They open this book. It turns out to be the Necronomicon, the Book of the Dead, and the Dead Rise. For all intents and purposes, pretty much, if you don't count the sequels, everyone dies in this movie. And it's just brutal seeing the effects. Everything done on a low budget is just so impressive. But it just has that creepy vibe, and I think the low budget of this film actually aids the story and just the, the scares when you watch it. You just, it just feels more real. I can't explain it. There's a reason why Stephen King praised this, and it was on Fangoria magazine. Like, There's a reason why there's a franchise from this one film. And it's amazing to see where this franchise started, you know? But it's also great to see how brutal it was in the beginning. <laughs> like, I just, this is like a perfect standalone. It's not only a perfect starting point for the Evil Dead franchise and Ash Williams as an iconic horror protagonist, but like it also is a great standalone horror film. After that, number one for me is Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2 was a blast watching right after the first one. Like I said, Bruce Campbell in the first one was like Sarah Connor in Terminator 1. He's Sarah Connor in Terminator 2 here. But in many ways, it reminds me of like Mad Max, you know? Like you have Mad Max, great movie on its own, but then the Road Warrior, Mad Max 2, just like took things into a whole new level. And that's what this film does. I love the supporting characters. The comedy is a bit wonky at times and seeing Ash's like mental state. But at the same time, this has a lot of action and scare still. Oh my god, don't get me started with Ted Raimi as Henrietta. Like, just don't get me started on that. I love seeing stop motion. These early films are so great. Like, seeing what a pre-CGI Evil Dead world was like. There's so much artistry and craftsmanship to these early films. And this film just improves upon everything. Like, I just... It's like, like I said, Road Warrior or Terminator 2 where it's just like... You could tell they just took it to the next level. And it still was low budget enough to where there wasn't any studio interference. It still had that filmmaking independent fun. And, you know, Bruce Campbell, Sam Raimi in real life go all the way back. And you can see that here. 
and I just love it. It's brutal seeing Ash get beaten up more, losing a hand. But then when he gets that chainsaw arm, that scene with the shotgun is just like groovy, you know, like badass. And then that iconic ending where you think it's over and it has that shocking end where he's stuck in medieval times setting up Army of Darkness. Oh man, just one of the best horror sequels. Anyway, those are my least to most favorite entries of the Evil Dead franchise. Let me know your list down in the comments below and what's your favorite Evil Dead film. In the meantime, you can subscribe for more videos and check out these other videos for more content.